Narrowband IoT or NB IoT is one of the key technologies for massive machine type communications now and also going into the future. Now in terms of the technologies, 3GPP defined various what they call MTC, machine type communication based technologies. And in release 13, they introduced, again, three flavors, one specifically focused at 2G. So that was the enhanced coverage GSM IoT offering. And then as far as LTE is concerned, we had LTM. Uh, so again, this is enhanced machine type communications. And we also have narrowband IoT. And what we're gonna be focusing on is this latter one here, the narrowband IoT, specifically starting to delve into the air interface aspects. Now, when you start looking at narrowband IoT, there's various benefits of a narrowband IoT based solution. The key ones include flexible deployment options. So this is where are we gonna deploy it in terms of the radio spectrum. So we'll look at that later in subsequent videos in more detail, but again, it's a key benefit. We also have enhanced performance in terms of coverage. So as you'll find, when you start looking at narrowband IoT, the air interface uses lots of repetition in order to try to guarantee data gets into inhospitable locations. We also need to think about the battery life. So typically with any IoT, Internet of Things based device, battery life may be a key concern, especially when the IoT device might not have access to mains power. So it's running off a battery and it might be in a location where you can't get access to it. So therefore you want possibly a 10 year plus battery life. Now, in terms of the 3GPP releases of narrowband IoT, we can start really at release 13. So remember, LT was initially added at release 8. There's been lots of enhancements of LTE. And at release 13, we introduced the first category of narrowband IoT device, referred to as NB1 or uh, narrowband category 1. And that provided certain capabilities. You can start discussing data rates of IoT. However, you've got to be mindful that the data rates, you might be looking at peak data rates, but also if you have multiple devices trying to utilize the system, they're sharing that resource. So you've got to think about how that resource is allocated. Now, you can see the data rate isn't very large. It's 27 kilobits per second in the downlink. It utilizes 180 kilohertz as a channel. Now, that is the same, uh, effectively, if you say 200 kilohertz, as what you would see in a GSM carrier, or, for example, in LT, when we start looking at a PRB, a physical resource block. So it mirrors the sort of the LT PRB, the physical resource block, in terms of size, to provide this sort of limited capability. It didn't stop there. We're going to go through the various releases all the way up to release 17. So in release 14, you can see we introduced a, an enhancement, various enhancements, and that in terms of a device was referred to as NB2, narrowband category two. Now that introduced a lot more flexibility down at the, uh, the air interface uh, in terms of the transport options, in terms of how you code the information, and that allowed you to increase that data rate. As you can see, the peak rate jumps up there. Now, I'm not saying everybody will get that, but it's all about making it more efficient, if you like, at the, uh, at the lower layers. Release 15 was a very big release because that's where 5G came in to the, the standards, the 3 GPP standards. However, it didn't impact I, narrowband IoT. So for example, um, the narrowband IoT at this point in time didn't have anything to do with 5G technology. It was still all very much 4G technology. And there was a few enhancements to do with the NB2, uh, such as uh, looking at uh, reduced power options, improving latency, uh, extended range, but we did add the support of TDD time division duplex. We'll see that later in other videos. 
As we hit release 16, now that is a big change for narrowband IoT. Uh, a lot of enhancements. One of the key ones is the support of 5G. So a narrowband IoT device utilizing a 4G radio can access a 5G core. Again, this will be discussed later on in other videos. And you can see we then go on and have further enhancements to do with power, latency, etc. In terms of release 17, again, continuing the enhancements theme, the key enhancements to focus in on has to be the inclusion of 16 QAM, 16 quadrature amplitude modulation that boosted the data rate, as you can see, up to approximately 250 kilobits per second. Now, this is just a summary of some of the key highlights associated with those releases, but if you look at the specifications, there's a lot more detail down in, in those specifications. Narrowband IoT is a 4G technology, and therefore, from release 13, it was designed to interwork with the 4G core, or the EPC, the Evolved Packet Core. So as you can see here, I've got my IoT device connecting through my e B, my Evolve node B, going up to the core network. And inside that core network, you have various functions. One of the key functions at the top there, closest to me, is the SCEF, the Service Capability Exposure function. And the reason I say that's a key function, you'll find for IoT devices, we have different methods for delivering data. So for example, typically your data goes through a PDN connection, which runs through what's known as a serving gateway and a PDN gateway as illustrated here. However, with the SCEF, what you can do is you can send an example here, some let's say non-IP data, referred to as NID, through that SCEF down to that E node B and across the air interface and vice versa. So you can see we have different ways of delivering data to that particular device. And the idea of this route here is it's more optimized because it's embedding a little bit of data onto the signaling, onto the control plane. Now from release 16, we added the support of the 5G system. So what you have is th this diagram here where you can see my, my E node B has changed to an NG, a next generation E node B. And one of the key things about a next generation E node B is it supports the what's called N2, N3 reference points which connect to a 5GC or a 5G core. So now my IoT device, which has got a 4G, if you like, radio, we can bolt on some 5G, what's called NAS or non-access stratum signaling. So the device can talk 5G to the 5G core network. In a similar way, we can connect to the data network. Terminology is slightly different, but we have a PDU session if we're going off through the, uh, uh, the user plane function that's illustrated here, the UPF. But on the diagram closest to me, you can see we also have the NEF, the network exposure function, which is very similar to the SCEF that we saw in the 4G architecture. And you can see in my diagram here that the session uh, can go through that NEF, that network exposure function, again, linking in.